It's Friday, September 1st, 2017, and this is the first installment for my Countdown to Retirement video series for the month of September 2017 as I count down to June 2019, 22 months to go, including the current month. And it's also a three-day weekend, no work on Monday. So, for those who aren't aware, I work not too far from Strand Books, and I tend to go there a every day during lunch. I also take a lot of weekend book trips and go in the tri-state area generally to bookstores. The Strand's okay, but it's not really that great compared to a lot of the stores outside of the city where you can get much better prices and even better selection a lot of the time. But you can get lucky at Strand, especially at the books outside that are, you know, they sell cheaper. And today I got lucky. So I got 10 books, dollar each. I'm about to go over them. Um, nine of them are a magazine, American Indian Art Magazine. They're all from the 1990s. And I went, it had more than, than the ones I bought, but I, I looked through each one of them and you know, picked out the ones I liked most. There were two or three I left behind. So this is for autumn 1996. Let me get them all over here. <clears throat> this is no particular order. Summer 1995. Summer 1997. Again, these were a dollar each, and they're all in like pretty excellent condition for the most part. Winter 1994. And they, the ones I picked out have articles mostly about Plains Indians and like ledger drawings and Plains shirts, uh, you know, the beautiful quill work and so forth. That kind of stuff I like to read about and look at the pictures, and especially the ledger art. Uh, spring 1993. Native Americans, especially the Plains Indians, had a beautiful uh, material culture. Like something like this. Look at that. Come on. What other kind of people create something so beautiful? None. Love them. Summer 1996. Spring 1995. Winter 1996 and summer 1994. And then I have this book here. It's the third edition America, a narrative history by Tyndall and Shi, or Shy. It's S H I. It's the third edition. And I was looking through it. And I opened up right away to a chapter that was about you know religion. And I'm an atheist. I thought it was kind of interesting talking about religion in America. And so for a dollar, there's a lot of stuff in here. It was the Civil War, World Wars, colonial times, lots of good stuff. So for Buck, and it got good reviews online. So that's it for today. And I feel a sneeze coming on. I was right about that sneeze, but I paused for a moment for that. So tomorrow we go to two bookstores and taking my son to a, like a train, uh, like a train, maybe it's a train ride and, and outdoors, the trains you can go on, I guess. I'm not really sure what it is, some kind of train land. And uh, hopefully have a good time, go eat out, go to two bookstores, and maybe I'll make a video tomorrow night if I get lucky and find some good books. Till then, bye. Hello there, it's Tuesday night, September 5th, time for the next video update. So I mentioned in my last video that we were going to a couple used bookstores on Saturday. We ended up going to three. I added one to the list because I didn't really have much confidence in the other two of finding uh, a good number of books, which is the last thing I need is to find a lot of books. But, you know, it's fun going out and coming home with books if you're going out to look for them. So the, the store that I added at the last second, I, en I ended up buying one book, The Last Warrior by Frederick Bean. I have this book, but I like the cover. I haven't read it yet. Hopefully it's good. It wasn't even $2 with tax. I didn't want to leave with nothing, so I picked it up. There was just nothing else in the store to get. The other two stores I bought, nothing. I mean, it was just a desert. It, from, from either having nothing of interest or some books of interest, but prices just being ridiculous for, for what I was getting. Um, you know, when you go to a lot of the stores I go to and you get stuff cheap, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, 
and sometimes like really mint condition books. Then you see people sell on the same book, like I see it strand or like in crappy condition even. For ten, twelve, fifteen dollars. I just can't take that. So unless it's something that I really think I'm just not gonna find anywhere or that I don't have and I've never seen, I'm just not splurging for it. So I ended up just with one book on Saturday. So then in the mail today came two books. These are the last two Helen McGinnis books that I needed for my collection. Uh, Helen McGinnis, The Hidden Target, and Prelude to Terror. So that completes my Helen McGinnis collection, unless I see like a really nice vintage paperback. Um, I have them all, and now I have to read them. <laughs> Good luck to me. Okay, then today at Strand, I found, this was like excellent condition, Waterloo, Day of Battle by David Haworth. And basically, it's a first-hand account of participants at uh, the Battle of Waterloo. So it looks interesting, got a cool cover, and uh, it even had inside, well first of all the end, end papers here have a map, and someone had put inside an old newspaper clipping, this is from uh, June 1954, some kind of newspaper called The Listener. I don't even know where this is from. That's kind of cool. Uh, so, and I don't really have anything on Waterloo. And it just looked interesting, first-hand accounts. I thought I would expand my horizons a little bit, as I've done like with the Helen McGinnis books. And so, what else did I want to say? Life. I don't know. Oh, I was watching one of my clips today, and actually what I'm about to talk about is even happening right now. I am just, like, so boring. I mean, I was watching one of my YouTube clips trying to find something I had said, and watching the video, I was just like, oh my god, is that me? Oh, and then what was really funny was that my voice, for some reason, was not syncing correctly to the video. It was just off a little bit might even be happening right now by the time this gets on YouTube. So it was it was just this odd quality of, you know, not only like just boredom, I'm just not that interesting. I, you know, it's for me this is fun. I'm showing the books that I buy and counting down to retirement. But co combined with the idea that it's just not stimulating viewing Maybe it is for others, because I, I know what I already purchased, so when I'm watching it back, I already know what's coming up, more or less. To someone viewing, they're seeing what books that I buy, or they really no one watches anyway. But um, what just was like the icing on the cake was the way that my voice was not really syncing with the video properly, and so it just added to the mess of the whole thing. So that's it. Um... We are going out again this weekend. Maybe I'll find stuff at Strand on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm bound to find a book or two or three. Hope I hope I don't, but it, it's bound to happen. And, uh, and then Saturday we go into two stores that I really do like a lot, and I usually do come home with you know, 15, 20, 30 books. That's a whole project if I had to put them, where to put them and reorganizing and so forth. So I think I've bored you enough already, and... Uh, Counting down to retirement. This is just kind of fun thing for me to do. I'm out of things to say. Bye-bye. It's Wednesday night, September 6th, and it's time for another update. What you don't know is that this is like my 10th time starting this video. <laughs> I keep messing up. I might even be two, three minutes into it, and I, I all of a sudden I'm like, what am I doing here? And I just, I stop and I start again. You thought I was a real professional, right? But, I don't know, some nights I just can't get it together. So, let's try again. Tomorrow is a big day for my son. He starts seventh grade. That's pretty amazing. I remember this little baby, and now he's starting seventh grade, and he's going to be taller than me maybe in a, a year or two, or three. Getting close already. What did I get today at Strand? So what did I get? Well, a few months ago, I had seen a book that I thought my wife might want, and I couldn't get in touch with her. I tried to call her. 
because I know she's not like the biggest fan of this person, but she might want the book. And uh, she, I couldn't get through to her, like I said, and I didn't get the book. I felt kind of bad about it. And I saw it again today, and this time I didn't let it get away because I told her about it. She said, oh, no, if you ever see it again, you know, I'll, I'll take it. So for $2, it's pretty much brand new, um, Marilyn by Gloria Steinem and Photographs by George Barris. It's actually a nice book. I put the sleeve on it, the clear broad art sleeve. Um, a lot of nice pictures in it. Of course, Marilyn Monroe was in Some Like It Hot. I know she likes that movie. I, I like it a lot, too. It was a great movie. So this seems like a, a nice book, and it was in, you know, for $2. And it's like pretty much like brand new. That's a steal, right? Other than free or a dollar. Um, so, Blood and Thunder by Hampton Sides. This I have, but I got it again. I have the hard cover and the soft cover, and now I have another soft cover. This will be, it's, it's just about brand new, very light wear, but I could you know, read this on the train. Um, and if I ever open up a used bookstore 10, 15 years from now, and I'm not saying I am, it's just always there in the back of my head. But, you know, I have a lot of books that I could sell that I got real cheap, you know, a dollar, two dollars, and I could sell them for, you know, I mean, you could put this out in a used bookstore 10 years from now for five bucks. Why not? Then, this I didn't have. So this was a good purchase. It was $2. Battles of the American Civil War, 1861 to 1865. The inside hardcover is actually the same as the jacket. And this has several authors. Um, first of all, it's subtitled From Fort Sumter to Petersburg. Its authors are, I'll just give last names, Doherty Twice, Hills, McNabb, and Pak, pa, Pavkovic, P-A-V-K-O-V-I-C, Pavkovic. And this book it looks pretty cool. It's got a lot of good reviews online, and there's a lot of good pictures in here, but there's also like battlefield maps for each battle that is covered. There's quite a few battles covered in here, and... There's a lot of nice pictures. Let me see here. Illustrations. Like here's a. And let's find a photograph. Give me a second, will you? Photographs. Here we go. There's some ones that aren't so popular in here, too. But it's just hard to flip and find perfect. Examples. Uh, let's see. I'll try one more second here. This is Governor Lou Wallace. He wrote uh, Ben Hur. A religious nut, probably, right? That's a book it's about Christ. But this book has a lot of nice art in it, the maps, so it's pretty cool. So that's what I got today, and we'll see what happens tomorrow. This weekend, I, I had mentioned we go away to a couple of nice bookstores I almost always do well in. And I uh, kind of felt like chatting, but I'll let it go for another time. Bye. It's Sunday, September 10th, and we had quite a book haul yesterday, me particularly. We went to two used bookstores that are connected to libraries and amazingly they really don't sell very many discarded library books most of the books are donated books or just books that you know, never receive library stampings even if they were library books so I bought a total of 43 books and I paid 53 and change so if you divide that up I paid about a dollar and a quarter for each book now, I go to a lot of bookstores, and especially I go to Strand a lot in New York City because I work nearby. They have inexpensive books outside, but most of the books that I have here, you're not going to find outside. Um, you know, sure, one here and there, but for the most part, you're not. And to buy these books inside the store would have easily cost like four or $500 or more. 
because the, the vintage paperbacks alone they sell, they're 10 $15 each there. I was getting them for like 50 cents. So you just can't beat that. So let's get on. First, I'm going to, I'm going to do the paperbacks, go over the paperbacks, and then bring out another batch, another batch, and we'll go over everything. So there was a whole shelf full of science fiction, a lot of vintage science fiction books. And I went through them, and I probably could have got even more, but I did pretty good. So first I have um, Swords Against Tomorrow, edited by Robert Hoskins. It's short stories, Lynn Carter, John Jakes, Leigh Brackett, Paul Anderson. Then I've got Swords and Sorcery. This one was Swords Against Tomorrow. This one's Swords and Sorcery. H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, Robert Howard, Lauren Dunsany, Fritz Lieber, um, Paul Anderson again, and there's more. Then, Warlocks and Warriors. These are all in very nice shape. Um, an Anthology of Heroic Fantasy, edited with an introduction by L. Sprague de Camp. Never in This World which is compiled by Idella Purnell Stone, 12 famous science fiction writers in rare and whimsical moods. The Fifth Galaxy Reader, edited by H.L. Gold. They're all basically short stories, which is fine. Um, don't have to, you know, it's nice to just be able to read short science fiction without having to read a whole novel. Although I do have some, like by C.J. Cherry, and I think she's very good. Uh, Seven Trips Through Time and Space. Edited by Graf Conklin. Eternal Adventure from Here to Infinity, an anthology of science fiction. The Unknown. Actually, it's called Isaac Asimov Introduces the Unknown. Weird cover. Uh, the Greatest Fantasy Stories Ever Written from the Greatest Fantasy Magazine Ever Published. Edited by D.R. Benson, illustrated by Ed Cartier. Science Fiction Adventures in Dimension. Edited by Graf Conklin, Ray Bradbury's in here, Lester Del Rey, Fritz Lieber, Isaac Asimov, and others. And this looked interesting. I just thought the cover was kind of cool. Uh, Nine Princes in Amber, Roger Zelazny. It's like a knight on the cover. It's kind of cool. Then, continuing. being attacked by books. Okay. Uh, Falcons of France. This is a history, an epic novel of the, actually, excuse me, a novel. An epic novel of the Lafayette Flying Corps, Corps of World War I fame. Then I found, uh, all, all day, I only was able to find one Helen McGinnis book, Agent in Place. And I have this, but this is um, was in pretty nice condition. And I'll compare it to the other ones I have and see which will to be to read and which will be to save. This was in really nice shape. That's why I got it. Uh, Ian Fleming from Russia with Love, a James Bond novel. This one I didn't have. There's a few more that I need. It's funny, for a long time I would see them and just never get them. And then I started to watch the James Bond movies with Daniel Craig and really liked them. And then I started to get the James Bond novels. But I feel bad for all the ones I didn't buy over the years that I've seen and just always walk right by them. I would have had them all already. This look, this was a really cool one. Uh, Bury Me Deep. It's like in excellent shape. 50 cents. Harold Q. Mazur. Got pretty good reviews also online. And this was the first Horatio Hornblower novel. Mr. Midshipman Hornblower by C.S. Forrester. It's the first one in the series. And I realized when I got home, there were some other ones they had that I had like left on the shelf as planning to go back and look at them again. And I just I left and I forgot all about it. But I, I see them a lot, especially at this one particular library store. I, they always have a few. Um, they used to have a, like, almost every one of them, a whole like, like half a shelf just filled with them, vintage ones, nice ones. And I would never pay attention to them 
cool covers and all, but it just wasn't really my thing. And then I was watching some clips of uh, Horatio Hornblower's series on TV. It looked pretty cool. So it was the first novel. If I ever get to read it, you know, who knows? So much to read. Uh, Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. I bought this a different cover, um, this book with a different cover recently. But this has an introduction the other one didn't have. So, again, it was cheap and great shape. And then the last two paperbacks, these were, came to a dollar for the two of them. Sherlock Holmes, Volumes 1 and 2. This is the complete novels and stories. So even though I have some paperbacks with some stories, this is, this is everything right here. So for a dollar, they were in really nice shape. I had to get it. Okay, I'm going to reorganize and be right back. Okay, we're back. So first, I, there are two, uh, two books I got on World War I. One is 1918, Gamble for Victory, The Greatest Attack of World War I by Robert Cowley. Just a cool little hardcover book. There's not exactly the best picture to show because there's dead people in that one. But uh, it's, photo, it's nicely illustrated. Just not that all the illustrations are nice. Um, so, 1918, Gamble for Victory. Then, this was a large World War I book. It's kind of a coffee table book, but I, I like that stuff. Um, H.P. Wilmot. And, let's see here. Give you an idea what the book is like. So, kind of cool. Then, I found the companion to that for World War II at another store. So I got lucky. And both of them are like brand new in each store. Um, this one here is also Wilmot. Uh, Wil Wilmot. H.P. Wilmot, Robin Cross, and Charles Messenger. World War II. Let's take a look. So, very nice. Then this next one <clears throat> was one of the best finds of the day. Uh, it seems to be pretty rare. Collier's Photographic History of World War II. Hardcover. This is from 1946. And <clears throat> let's find something here. It's just filled with photographs with obviously the captions and this is an old book. You never know what you're gonna find when you go out to use bookstores. And again, everything here average price was a dollar and a quarter. Now this book I purchased recently in um, soft cover, but I saw it in hard cover and thought, "What the hell? I'll get it." Ten Days to D-Day by David Stafford. Citizens and soldiers on the eve of the invasion. It's got good reviews. If it had so-so reviews, I would have just and would have needed it again. But it had nice reviews, and I thought, you know, nice hard cover, looks unused. I'll get it. And then. John Keegan, The Second World War. It's kind of a weird cover. So, this is mostly text. There's some pictures, but mostly text. But it's, it's got a good review. It's supposed to be one of the you know, top World War II books. Then, June 6, 1944, The Voices of D Day by Gerald Astor. It looks, you know, it looks brand new. Or gently read, but could be brand new. And then this one was an interesting one. Um, the title kind of caught my eye. I don't know if it was, if it was um, like a, a novel or, or real, but it, it's a, it seems to be real. It's called My War, a love story in letters and drawings by Tracy Sugarman. And the guy would. Um, whose letters the book is based on, he 
he wrote letters to his wife that she saved, and he would do sketches. He was like a, he was an artist, and you could see here, pretty good. Find one more. Some of them are color. Some of them are just like uh, black and white. Just pass. Oh, here we go. So that seemed like a good find. And then the last World War II book is Life World War II. Thick book. It's in excellent shape. And basically it's just all... Here, yeah, this is a funny picture. The guy's getting his pants sewed by a woman. He's like laying in her lap. And it's just all pictures from World War II. Time to get the next stack. Okay, the last stack... Um, actually it's two stacks related to this book haul I'm just going to show in no particular order and then I have a few more items to show it's a very good weekend for books okay this long knife James Alexander Tom a novel based on the life of George Rogers Clark this is an awesome painting on the cover here I have this in a smaller paperback I believe this is a larger oversized soft cover it's in great shape And then, this is an old book. It, there was a dust jacket that was like all ripped up. I didn't even take it. It was like just pieces left laying with the book. Um, the Mine with the Iron Door by Harold Bell Wright. And the reason why I got this is because I can't find can't find it again, but I had read a quote online from the book that I thought was interesting in, in a, co a conversation with an, with an Indian in the book, um, with a Native American. And I just liked uh, what was being said that was interesting and I, I just you know I know it's in the book somewhere I don't know how to find it again but when I saw the book I thought what the hell I'll get it too bad the jacket was messed up uh, Yellowstone National Park by Hiram Martin Chittenden this is an old Oklahoma press book it's all information like mountain men and exploring the uh, Yellowstone Park and this book it's a famous book Crazy Horse Marie Sandoz this was a quarter and it's like an excellent shape it was a quarter and I have this book but I don't know if I have well actually I do have I have this in hardcover this particular copy because it has an introduction by Stephen Oates I also have an, an older version that I don't think has um, an introduction or at least not one by Stephen Oates but I have this in hardcover now I have it in softcover it was a quarter. I, what was I supposed to do? I had to get it. Can you believe that a quarter? J. Frank Doby, the Mustangs. I have this, but it was cheap. I wanted to get it again. This, I don't remember what I paid. A quarter or a dollar? I don't remember. But uh, there you go. Now this was interesting. I read this book a year or two ago. The Red Badge of Courage. This is an annotated version by Charles LaRocca. And the guy, Charles LaRocca, is actually a, well, at least was when this book came out like 25 years ago almost, um, a teacher, a history teacher in the area where I bought the book. So that was kind of cool. It's in great shape. And uh, from what I gathered about the book, he thinks, Charles LaRocca, that that the book is based on a real person that um, Stephen Crane used someone real story to help write his book so I'm kind of interested to read that and see what I think of it then this is something I normally wouldn't buy but it was very inexpensive maybe a dollar uh, the making of Pride and Prejudice this is the this is the version with Colin Firth which I have the DVD to but haven't watched it yet I really like the old version with Laurence Olivier. That was really good. So um, when I saw this, I just thought, you know, there's interviews in here and pictures and basically, you know, just the making of the movie, like miniseries. And uh, so, what do you know? I got it. This was a quarter. Alexander the Great. Uh, Nick Secunda and John Wari. 
Normally this would have been a dollar, but they were having a sale, so it was a quarter. I didn't know they were having a sale like that also, um, so it was just kind of lucky. It's color illustrations, black and white, and kind of interesting. I thought it was something new, something I don't really have anything like that, Alexander the Great, so. From Pittsburgh to the Rocky Mountains, Major Stephen Long's Expedition 1890 to 1820, edited by Maxine Benson, hardcover. Nice find. I have that, but I had to get it again. Now this I don't have. The Horse in War, J.M. Brereton. I have looked in vain for reviews of this online. This book's from, I think it was 1976, and I can't find reviews. But it looks interesting, and I saw that it was um, referenced in some other books. So, hoping for the best. I have now like maybe four cavalry books. One of them I'm actually reading right now. And this was a cool find. Let me tell you what happened with this. So this is um, mine. Eye, mine eyes have seen the glory. <clears throat> it's from the, this book's from the 1990s. The Civil War in Art. Harold Holzer and Mark E. Neely Jr. So this book was was marked at six dollars. Again, I say average price of the books was a dollar and a quarter because some of the books I paid a quarter for them, and so, you know, it averages out. Um, but I got this book for five. I asked if I can get it for less, and they said yes because in the uh, corner over here, you might see there's a little bit of different color blue. I, I printed that out of the computer. It was missing a piece of the dust jacket there, so I kind of tried to match the color as close as I could and printed it out and... and uh, pasted it, you know, uh, taped it inside the dust jacket, and then I put that clear broad art sleeve on it. So it's not really that noticeable. The truth is it's really not. If you're not, if you're not aware of it, you wouldn't even know. So if it's that little, like, half an inch um, piece that's missing, so got it for $5, and that's really cool. I have now... Uh, maybe three Civil War art books. Uh, actually, I have more than that. I have like some of them. Actually, I have, I have more. This, uh, I have like maybe three general art books with the Civil War. Then I have like specialty ones by certain artists that that are just uh, you know, um, I can't think of any names right now. Like more Kunstler, perhaps um, people you know just like monographs, particular artists, and then some kind of just general ones with all different art. Now this was kind of interesting. This is called 100 Battles, Decisive Conflicts That Shaped the World. It's a little book, like brand new, and basically there's maps in here, pictures. It's just like reviews of 100 battles. And it really looks pretty interesting. It goes back to B.C. up to, let's see... All the way up to the 2000s. Little Bitcoin is in here. Civil War battles. So that was kind of cool. Here's another one that I had, but I wanted to get it. Um, Waterloo Day of Battle, David Howarth. It's funny because I don't know if I've ever seen this book before. And all of a sudden now in the last couple of weeks, I've seen it twice. <clears throat> I apologize for the glare. What do you want? This is just me in my living room. There's a light right over here. This is not a professional studio, you know. Uh, Voices of the Winds, Native American Legends. This is brand new. This might have been a quarter. Um, Margot Edmonds and Ella E. Clark, illustrated by Molly Braun. This I haven't had a chance to put on a clear jacket yet. Um, it's Narrative of My Captivity Among the Sioux Indians, Fanny Kelly. Uh, I might have got this for a quarter, because I have it, and it wasn't something I would probably buy again, because I don't really need two of them, but I think it was a quarter, in which case I needed two of them. This book 
it looks very interesting. Um, Voices from the Wilderness. The Frontiersman's Own Story, edited by Thomas Fronchek. And you know what? I have this one already. But this copy will be the reading copy, because the other copy is kind of pristine. At least I remember it being that way. This is a uh, very good shape, but it's just like, like little, like little just dings in the dust jacket. Nothing bad at all. Just, you know, a little worn. But um, this is pretty interesting. At least it looks interesting. It's all uh, 27 chapters from, uh, let's, see, let's see, Daniel Boone, George Rogers Clark, Alexander Henry... Davy Crockett, John Tanner, John Coulter, John, James Klein, Hugh Glass, James Beckworth, Jedediah Smith, Joe Meek, Zenas Leonard, Thomas Fitzpatrick, Kit Carson, James Bridger, all famous people from the Old West, some better known than others, uh, with like, I guess, their first person accounts of their life in the Old West. And then last from this book haul was D. Brown, Kildare Mountain, hardcover. So, now let's show the rest. Okay, I'm back. Not that I was really gone a long time for you, but it's been a minute or two here. Okay, my wife, uh, she, I'll show you the three books that she got. Um, one is The Wedding Sisters by Jamie Brenner. And then these next two books I found for her, High Society, The Life of Grace Kelly, by Donald Spoto. And this was a really cool find. It was two dollars. Like brand new. Um, Looking for Lincoln by uh, Philip Kunhart, Peter Kunhart, and another Peter Kunhart Jr. Um, there's another book by Kunhart of Lincoln that I found from my wife that was like brand new also that I got, I think, for 2 or $3. And uh, so now I found for her both books um, by him, by these the Kuhnharts. That's not the best page to open up to. Let's see here. What do you got here? Oh. This is just all, you know, a lot of pictures and text. The Making of an American Icon is, in, is the subtitle of the book. And I couldn't believe I found this. It was just uh, just sitting there waiting for me. It's always amazing what you find because a lot of the books, they have um, dates on them, like the right 7 slash 17. So that means that it must mean July that they got the book. And who knows how long it's been out. I end up with the... I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I don't end up with, but I'm su always surprised at what I do find. Um, this was not something that when I have to show you, I, I ordered online. It was kind of a birthday present to myself, although my birthday is not for a few months from now. But I wanted to get it, so I'm calling it a birthday gift. Um, I have one book by this artist already, since this is the other, the other one. There's one more, but didn't get very good reviews because I guess the pictures were a little bit small in the book. Um... If I ever see it, I, I'm sure I get it. Tapestry, the uh, paintings of Robert E. McGinnis, edited by Arnie and Kathy Fenner. And McGinnis is uh, an awesome artist. It's not that thick a book, but it's a good one. Like I said, I have another one that came out by him, uh, or about him, like maybe last year. And now the last of what I picked up this weekend. Uh, as I mentioned in the last month's video, my mother-in-law had died and I had gotten some books from her apartment. And uh, this is probably the end of it now here. We went back today, we were cleaning up more stuff and found a few more items. So I'll just show these real quick here. Um, this, was, this is a video cassette, which I don't need because I have the DVD, but I thought the box was kind of cool. Um, it's uh, My Man Godfrey with William Powell and Carol Lombard. I just like the picture. <clears throat> but, you know, be nice to have. And this is a two-disc set, special edition, The Day the Earth Stood Still. It was unopened. Uh, so, I already ripped this into the computer so I could watch it on my tablet. 
this was something that uh, nobody was taking it, so I asked if I could have it. Uh, Great Expectations, Charles Dickens. I never read Dickens in my life. And uh, but this has good reviews. Famous book. It's got an introduction here. It's a nice edition. And uh, it's actually called the Collector's Edition, the New York Public Library. So, there you go. Then, um, Nero Wolf, uh, Rex Stout's Where There's a Will. So, Nero Wolf is the fictional detective, and Rex Stout is the author, for those who don't know. Um, and the book's called Where There's a Will. This is about the Titanic by Walter Lord. I have a book by Walter Lord about the Alamo. And it's kind of a cool painting on the cover. It was in excellent shape. This I, I picked up, uh, not such as I picked up, I, I took because it's just it's a famous book. I don't know anything about it really, but the cover's kind of intriguing. Studs Lonigan, uh, James T. Farrell's com Masterpiece Complete. This is like all three books in one. They were apparently a trilogy. And this is all of them together. And then this is a Western, uh, The Border Bandit, Evan Evans. Um, it looks wet here, but it's not. It's just it's old. It, it probably was wet at one time. And uh, this is from... Yeah, when is this from? It's from 1926. This is an old book. And it's still in great shape, actually. Evan Evans is, of course, Max Brand, which is also a pen name for... I can't think of his real name right now. But there you go. And then last, Kenneth Roberts is a famous historical novelist about like Revolutionary War times. And this is... Uh, I don't think this book ever had a jacket when it came out. I looked it up online, and the picture I saw was just like this without a jacket. This is Lydia Bailey, um, the name of this particular novel. And so it takes place in the late 1700s, I guess. And uh, it's that old way they used to do the, the pages, kind of rough. Could a deckle edge, maybe. And uh, some scuff marks, but cool. So that's it for this weekend's book haul. Again, that the two bookstores I went to, I got 43 books and paid 53 and change, average price a dollar and a quarter a book. That's pretty amazing. What's more amazing is how am I ever going to figure out where to put all these books? I will figure it out. That's the amazing part. Well, it is. I have no more room. I don't know. I, this, could, this could take me a while. It's not going to get done tonight. And it's Sunday night. And this may have to wait till like next weekend. I don't know. Till then, bye. It's Tuesday night, September 12th, and time for another update. So yesterday I went to Strand, which I do every day when I go to work, and I did get lucky. I found four books. I found one more today. So five books in the last two days. Now on Saturday when I went away, I purchased an Horatio Hornblower novel, the first one in the series. So when I saw these two books, they're not Horatio Hornblower. They got good reviews. Um, they're written by... Dudley Pope, and this one is called Governor Ramage R.N., and Ramage's Diamond. They're like excellent shape, 50 cents, so I figured I'd give them a shot. They got good reviews, which I didn't know at the time that I purchased them. I looked it up after, so good purchase. Then I picked up Buffalo Trail Hardcover. This is like brand new uh, by Jeff Ginn. And I put the jacket on it. It's like brand new. I've got two of them now. And then this was really interesting. It's called Voices of Valor. Uh, D-Day, June 6, 1944. By Douglas Brinkley and Ronald J. Drez. And there's 
DV, uh, two CDs in here. I'll show you. There's one, one of them right there. They're un, unused. They're still uh, taped inside where they belong. And this book has a lot of cool images. And I guess first-hand accounts of people who are in D-Day. Um, let's see. So again, uh, Voices of Valor. Then today, it didn't have a dust jacket, but I wanted it. It was $2. The Union Image. And this is by, uh, it's called Popular Prince of the Civil War North by Mark Neely and Harold Holzer. And Harold Holzer signed this, he inscribed it to somebody, not me, but um, it's kind of cool what he wrote. I'll read it to you, if I can find it. Oh, here it is. It says, four, and I can't read it, but it must be a woman because of what he wrote. So he wrote, about whose image volumes could be written with best wishes on your birthday. So, and it's signed by him. It's kind of cute. I'll show you. I thought that was kind of neat. It doesn't have the jacket again, but um, let me see something here. Here, like it's a lot of nice art. And there's a lot of text, and I have some good Civil War art books now, so. If I ever see it with the dust jacket, maybe I'll get it. It depends if it's like a dollar or two. That's it for tonight's update. Oh, tonight a new show started. Um, the Orville with uh, Seth MacFarlane. It's like a sci-fi spoof, Star Trek sci-fi spoof. Looks good. Have a, I didn't watch it. I recorded it and uh, watch it in a few days. Hopefully it's the start of a new series that I like. Over and out. It's Friday, September 15th, and I'm back in the bedroom for this particular video update. It's also 21 and a half months until retirement, as we're halfway through September. It's going pretty quick, September. So, what's going on with books? That's mostly what I seem to get, books. So, on Wednesday at Strand, I was going to do a Wednesday update because I came home with a few books, but then I decided to just wait until Friday. Uh, to see what else I can get over the next couple of days. So on Wednesday, I picked up a few books. Uh, two of them are the Time Life series, Indians of the Western Range. This has some Nez Perce, Shoshone, Ute, so it looked interesting. I don't have that one. This one I had, th these were uh, $2 each. And uh, so this one I have two of now, Tribes of the Southern Plains. Great cover. And I figured it was just worth getting. It's like in brand new condition. Then they had four Civil War books. They must have been cleaning out the Civil War section. I got some good stuff. These were uh, two dollars. This was two dollars. Well, they were all two dollars except one that was soft cover, which is a dollar. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Gettysburg: A Battlefield Atlas by Craig Simons. This is a pretty cool book. It has it's a complete breakdown of Getty, the Battle of Gettysburg with maps for like each section of the battle. There's also some illustrations in here, you know, pictures, but there's lots of maps and, and just like a uh, brief synopsis of each battle. It looks good. And this was a, a cool find, The Man Behind the Guns. It's $2, biography of General Henry J. Hunt, Commander of Artillery, Army of the Potomac. So another Civil War book. This is by Edward G. Longacre. It's got good reviews. And it was in great shape, two dollars. That was pretty good. In this book, this was I was surprised to find this. If you've been watching my videos, like anyone's been watching them really, except for maybe one friend, um, Sickles, The Incredible by W. A. Swanberg. I found this not too long, uh, when I was on vacation in in uh, Maine over the summer. In August, I picked up an old vintage paperback of it for a dollar. Of, of this book. And so when I saw it, I saw it said sickles on the side. I'm like, oh, what is it? Yeah, that must be it. And uh, so I was very happy that it was in great shape. So that old copy is like, something to save because it's, it's, you know, it's old and vintage and shouldn't really read that one. So 
this will be a reading, one f a reading copy. Then this is seems like a pretty cool book. They fought for the Union. Uh, by Francis A. Lord, and dust jacket was a, a little bit worn around the, the edges, but I put the broad art sleeve on it. And this book has a lot of illustrations. Uh, plus photographs and, and a lot of interesting looking narrative. Um, let me see if there's anything interesting here I could open up to. Give me a second, will you? Uh, oh. <clears throat> there's a looks like an old newspaper picture illustration. Some interesting chapter titles in here. I'll just go through a few of them real quick. Um, combat arms, technical services, special agencies, equipment, weapons and munitions, flags, uniforms, insignia, offices and leadership, discipline, morale, life in camp, prison and hospital, life at the front, the home front, battle losses, victories, defeats, and other chapters. So it's basically all about... Uh, the soldiers in the Union. Cool old find. So the one that was a dollar was this one, which is really cool. I got both Sickles books for a dollar. And that old vintage book is like, would be $15 or more in a lot of places. Then on Thursday, yesterday, I didn't find anything. I was actually a little bit relieved. Um, it's actually nice to go and not find something. Although I wonder what I missed. Them, probably, you know, I always wonder when I don't find something, or even when I do, what what's going to be put out after I leave or before I was there that someone else took. It's a terrible thing. I want it all. Okay. So today I found uh, two books. They were a dollar each. Son of the Morning Star by Evan Cannell. Evan S. Cannell. This is, I think this is a very good book. I know a lot of people put this book down. I think it's a very interesting book. And that could people who read this can wind up with a greater interest in the in the times assuming that they didn't have it beforehand can make them want to read more and learn more I think it's very good for that um, this cover I even though I have this book I don't have the book with this cover I don't I don't think I do this has Gary Cole from uh, the made for TV movie Son of the Morning Star which by the way is not based on this book it's the same title but that is not based on this book they just use the title um, so, and this is an updated, corrected version. There's a previous version that had some errors in it, and there's one in particular. I always open up to that page to know which copy I'm getting because I don't want to buy the one with the errors anymore. So, this is the updated version. Then, this book I also have in hardcover and soft cover, so now I have it uh, two soft covers. Um, Children of Grace, The Nez Perce War of 1877 by Bruce Hampton. This is a very good book. And it's in excellent shape. For a dollar, I just felt like I couldn't walk away without it, even if I had it already. Because it's just, it was like, brand new. And then in the mail, I had ordered from eBay. This was, it was very inexpensive. I don't remember exactly. It was like five, six dollars with shipping, I think. Casino Royale. And this is, a, this is a, a Robert McGinnis. I couldn't think of the name for a second. Robert McGinnis. In the past video, I had said... Anthony, I think I, I made a mistake. I don't know what I was thinking, Anthony or Tony, because there wasn't. There is an Anthony McGinnis. He he wrote a book called Counting Coup and Cutting Horses. I think was the name of that book. So that the McGinnis was in my head, and I and I thought Anthony, but Robert McGinnis is the famous artist, and he did this cover here. So Casino Royale. This was the first of the James Bond books. It was really in like an excellent condition, and. Uh, when I saw this on eBay, I just you know, I jumped at it, had to get it. So that's it for this particular week, uh, since Wednesday anyway. And uh, this weekend we have no trips planned, but the weekend after, uh, actually for the next like maybe three out of four weeks, we're going to be doing uh, book trips. So, and plus I got a strand every day, so there'll be updates, I'm sure. Till next time, bye. It's Wednesday, September 20th, and there's no work Thursday or Friday for me, so it's pretty much the end of my book buying week.
So this is what I picked up at Strand on Monday. I got two books. Outside I found Free Thinkers, A History of American Secularism by Susan Jacoby. It was like brand new. Good find. I've wanted to get this for a while. It came out 2004. I think it was 2004. I'll tell you in a second. 2004. And I just never did get it. And seeing it for two dollars, like brand new, cool. I'll go for that. This book here, I'm currently reading. A, uh, not this copy, but I like the book and wanted to have a, a nice edition, so I got this. It's uh, a current soft cover edition. It has a little introduction. It's uh, "Drums Along the Mohawk" by Walter D. Edmonds, and it's part of like a series vintage movie classics. Like they have like an excuse to print certain books, so they find movies made from famous books, or at least books made famous by certain movies um, and we print them with a little introduction this one it even says on the front uh, the basis for the classic movie starring Claudette Colbert and Henry Fonda and this introduction forward by Diana Gabaldon so this is a pretty good book it drums along the Mohawk not what I expected by the way the book is uh, so far anyway Totally unexpected what I'm reading, but I like it. I'm, I'm, there's a lot of book left, so we'll see what happens. Um, but I expect that I will like the rest of it too. This I found yesterday at Strand for fifty cents outside. Uh, Dashiell Hammett's The Glass Key. It was in excellent condition. I was surprised to see it. And today for a dollar, I found this. Uh, uh, Duryi Suave by Thomas Southwick a new introduction by Brian C. Pohanka and Pohanka is a well known, he passed away but he's well known as a Civil War historian and researcher and this is like a little book it was in excellent condition just sitting out there for a dollar picture on the back and uh, there's some pictures in here mostly it's mostly it's text it's like a journal of a Civil War soldier and again, there's there are some images interspersed throughout, and again the introduction by Brian Pohanka. It was only a dollar, so that was a good purchase. Next week, uh, the end of next week will be the end of the month, and uh, then we're down to 21 months to retirement. Pretty good, can't complain. Oh, some news. So for those who find these videos at some point in time or my great grandkids or grandkids uh, my son yesterday in school caught the basketball a little bit funny and uh, fractured his index finger on his right hand not too bad um, we're in a little splint could be you know maybe two weeks three weeks with the splint we'll see uh, doctor said it wasn't very bad but still you know an injury and hurts him and it's hard to write but, you know, that's life. It could have been worse. You could break an arm, a leg, an ankle, a wrist. Those are worse. So, that's it for this video. This is this Saturday. We're going out on a book trip. And uh, we'll see what happens. I'm sure I'll find something for Saturday night to make another video. Bye. It's Saturday night, September 23rd, and time for another Countdown to Retirement book haul update. So, to start with... We did go out today, went to two bookstores, and I did do pretty good, I think. I didn't go overboard, which is, uh, so I found books, but I didn't go overboard. That's pretty good. Um, so, but first, before I get to that, uh, on the uh, internet, I think it was eBay, I had ordered two books that I wanted. Thunder on the River, it's an old vintage paperback by uh, Charlton Laird. And uh, while I was ordering, I wanted to get another book from this seller because I didn't pay to just like buy one book and pay shipping. I figured if I bought two books, he'd just combine the books for the same price, which he did. So the other book that I bought was The Man with Bogart's Face by Andrew Fenady. F-E-N-A-D-Y. So pretty cool. So two nice books there. And then today we went to two, 
two bookstores? No, th excuse me, three bookstores. Went to three bookstores, and I bought something at all of the stores, and in no particular order, I'm just going to go over them. I did get four paperbacks. One is Stallion Soldier by John L. Shelley. And this is actually part two. There was another book by this author with the same uh, main protagonist, so I went on eBay before and I ordered the other one. Hopefully they're good, because now I have both of them. Uh, again. This, take, this book here takes place at Fort Fetterman in the late 1860s. So I guess like Red Cloud, Red Cloud's War. Then, um, this book I don't have. My wife spotted it. I have, I think, all or just about all of the Isaac Asimov Foundation books. Uh, this is Prelude to Foundation, which I did not have. I actually thought I had it, and I looked it up, and I didn't, so good find, 50 cents. This one here, also 50 cents, Marine at War. This is uh, illustrated by, um, well, it's by Russell Davis, and it's specially illustrated. I'm not sure if Russell Davis did the illustrations or someone else, but uh, nice paperback. And last, again, 50 cents. This is D-Day with the Screaming Eagles by George E. Kazkamaki. Nice paperback. I have a lot of books on D-Day, and I have not read any yet. It, just, it interests me, and I, I plan to read them. I just can't at the moment. There's just too, too many things. Kind of maybe... May, Maybe I'll make like D-Day a project and read like two or three of them, let them sit a while, read another couple to get through them. And you can't read them all at one time. Um, then this book I have, but it was two dollars. I just, just you know, I never really see this anywhere. Tribal Wars of the Southern Plains by Stan Hoy, hardcover. So for two dollars, I I had to get it. It was like, except for the jacket having a couple of little uh, like tears, but very little ones like this one down here, but I taped it and it's not a big deal. Two dollars is a good price. This book here, uh, Philip Catcher, the Civil War source book. And I have another book by Philip Catcher which is like Revolutionary War Time, so this is his Civil War book. And it's basically um, just pictures, maps, his information on like the various battles and armies and campaigns and weapons and it's a source book so and it was two dollars it's like in brand new condition then uh, this book I have and I shouldn't have bought it but it was two dollars like, like that's a great excuse uh, Lewis and Clark the journey of the corpse of discovery the, an illustrated history dated Dayton Duncan and Ken Burns. I'm reading, I don't think I mentioned it, but I'm reading a Lewis and Clark journal um, right now, except that I kind of try to read it on the days when there's a journal entry in this particular edition of the journals. So it's going to take me like two years or so to read. Um, expected end date is actually a year from now. Next September I should be finishing it. So... And that'll be you know the, my my final year at work. Then, this is a book that I have. <laughs> oh boy, the North American Indians. Uh, this is two dollars. Uh, Paula Richardson Fleming and Judith Lusky, and this book is you know basically filled with there's some text and but it's a lot of photographs of Native Americans and information on the photographers and uh, let's see here find another go oh, here so it's a, it's really a very nice book and for two dollars this you know the other copy I have I think is like mint so this will be my reading copy which it's in good shape itself anyway so but uh, I went and got it again now this book I've been looking for, and I can never find a good copy that has the dust jacket. This is, um, so today I found it, it was $10. I wish it was a little bit less, like 7 or 8 I bought this at the last store we went to, which is not a discount store. 
Um, the other stores we went to are very low priced. But this is a uh, World War II James Jones. Uh, and this is like an illustrated edition. So I'll show you. Um, let's see here. It's like his per. I think it's like basically his personal feelings about war and his personal experiences in World War Two. I get one more picture, and it really looks interesting. Um, it's a fun book to look at. It's you know, a lot of illustrations. Okay, this this is good. So James Jones, World War Two, and this was ten, and that's actually a good price because I've I've seen it. I mean, I can certainly at the stores I go to regularly, like the library bookstores, I could probably find it for two, three dollars. But I haven't seen it, or at least not seen it with the dust jacket and the condition that I wanted. But when I went online and looked it up, people were selling it for 30, 40, over 100 I saw someone had it. So that's kind of crazy. So ten dollars, that's pretty good. And the, where's my stylus? Well, I'll find it in a second. And the um, two other things that I did purchase today, they were $2 each, two military history quarterly, the old hardcover ones, and um, I, I put them away by accident. They're up on a shelf over here, and they're just history magazines, but they're hardcover. I think they used to make them all in hardcover, and now they're, now they're softcover magazine, military history quarterly. Which I have to look up when that magazine started. I think it was in the late 1980s, but I'm not positive. I, I could even be way off. But uh, that's it. That's it for this video. We had a great time. Made out at a nice restaurant. My wife bought a book. My son bought, uh, purchased like eight books maybe, including a, eight or nine, including a Doctor Who book he's happy about. And he even uh, asked me for a book bag to put it in. It's like an older paperback. So now I was like all proud of having this old paperback book, and and so that's kind of nice to see that he's you know becoming more aware of keeping things in good condition, and that's like a hopeful sign. <laughs> um, so that's it for this video. Not going on any book trips next weekend, but the one after that we're off on that Saturday on another book jaunt. But of course I got to strand a lot during the week, so we'll see what comes up in the next few days. Later. Hello out there in YouTube land. It's time for another book update video as part of my Countdown to Retirement series, which is burning up YouTube in popularity. <laughs> so on Monday at Strand, I found Alfred Jacob Miller, Artist as Explorer. I have this book already. I bought it inside for $25. I wasn't going to, but it was really great shape. It cost more money on the internet, and it's a rarity in a way. So I wanted to get this, and you know, it pays to have two copies of this. I feel I have a lot of duplicates, and this is one I felt was a worthy acquisition. Um, I wish it was less than twenty-five, but twenty-five was a good deal. And this is this is um, from a. An exhibition, I guess, back around 1999. I'll give you an example of the art inside. So I really like Alfred Jacob Miller's work, and if I see, you know, whatever I see by him, I, I will probably buy <laughs> just because it's on the rare side. And I just think, you know, if I ever have a bookstore one day, I'll have duplicates and I can sell some of it. But you know, then my other part of my brain kicks in and says, you're never selling any of your books. You'll have them till you die. That's depressing, isn't it? Not that I'll have them till I die, that I'll die. <laughs> this video is going really bad. <laughs> well, I'm not going to start it again. It's already like my fifth time starting it because I keep messing up. So anyway... This I bought outside. Let's forget about all that death stuff, okay? We're alive. Okay. Um, Lovers by Linda Sunshine. And this book, 
it was two dollars and basically it's like famous couples in the movies like here is William Powell and Myrna Loy um, okay, let's see who else is in here uh, Newman and Woodward uh, Crawford and Gable, Gable and Harlow, Bogart and Bacall, Flynn and de Havilland, like such as they die with their boots on. So, two dollars was like in brand new shape. I thought it was kind of cool. Then this was interesting. They had this is part of part of a six book series. And they had five of the books. This is um, The Image of War, 1861 to 1865, Volume 4, Fighting for Time. Now again, this is part of a six-book series, and they had five of them. I let the others go, and they actually when I went back today, because I bought this yesterday, the others were gone, so they did sell. And I feel like I've seen them elsewhere once in a while and if I see one in good shape I'll get it. The other four weren't in, they were okay but this one was like really nice and dust jacket was in great shape and so I figured you know for two dollars I'm gonna get this one it wasn't an emergency to get the other ones right now um, if I see them once in a while so if I see a good copy I'll get one but that was the best of the bunch and then today I picked up pulp art. This was five dollars inside, and this is original cover paintings for the Great American Pulp Magazines by Robert Lesser. Now I have this book. Again, this is something that I felt that for the price. Let's see here. For the price, it was worth getting because it was like in brand new condition and that's not a book I see a lot so and I, the other copy I have I also bought at the same store for five dollars and this one is a tad better in condition so there you go some new stuff some duplicates but all in all good purchases I think Especially the Alfred Jacob Miller book. Um, don't feel you can go wrong with that. Those will increase with value, I believe. Again, not that I will ever sell it. But you never know. Never say never, right? So I was going to wait for Friday to do this video, figuring I'd find something tomorrow and or Friday. But I had some time tonight, and I thought I'll just get it done so I could put these books away. And that is it for this video. I have a um, a couple other things, and actually three items on order that should be arriving between tomorrow and maybe the end of next week. So, and this weekend we're not going on a book trip, but the following weekend we are. And in the meantime, I do go to Strand, so we'll see what happens. And I'm extending this video out now needlessly, so I'm just going to say goodbye. Bye. It's Friday night, September 29th. And time for another installment in my countdown to retirement video for the month of September. Tomorrow I will do one more. I'll uh, tell what movies I watched and what books I read for the month. And then it's on to October. So first things first. Um, Farscape Rewatch will be starting October 13th. And the reason why it's October 13th is there will be 90 Fridays. 88 episodes of Farscape plus a miniseries, which if you watch in two episodes makes it 90 weeks. You do one a week. So starting October 13th will be 90 Fridays until the end of June 2019. So as part of the countdown to retirement, we will watch one episode of Farscape a week. And it will be really cool when we get to the end. Retirement. So as a part of the Farscape Retirement Celebration uh, Countdown, I picked up these cards on eBay. It was a set, came in this uh, little package here. And the, these are, look, they're like three and a half by five and a half, something like that. Um, it's John Crichton.
Aaron Soon. These are good for framing. Excuse me. Barla Kreis. Chiana. <coughs> Excuse me. Rigel. Dargo, Car Dargo, Jewel, much longer name, but I can't say it right now. Everybody's favorite villain, Scorpius, and Stark, as in Stark raving mad. Okay, to continue. So, I also purchased online uh, Cavalry Sergeant by John L. Shelley, and I, I did get this old vintage book because I found on our last book trip last Saturday um, another book by John Shelley that has the same character, and that book, I think, was the follow-up to this book. There was a series of two, apparently. So, I wanted to get the other one and I've tracked it down pretty easy got a nice copy then uh, today this is a let's see today I picked up quite a few nice things I think this is uh, insight study guides to a streetcar named desire the play by Tennessee Williams also a famous movie and this is a study guide by Rosemary O'Shea and it's basically like a scene by scene deconstruction type of thing and look pretty interesting it's only a dollar it's in great shape then today two dollars i picked up i should be extremely happy in your company a novel of lewis and clark by brian hall this came out around 12 13 14 years ago somewhere in there I think, I think maybe 2003. So I'd never heard of it before. I saw it today. I didn't even know what it was. It, you know, it was just sitting like face out like this, the spine. And uh, I thought, it, you know, just pulled it off to see what it was and saw Lewis and Clark. And I thought, okay, you know, it's in great shape, like brand new pretty much. And uh, hopefully that'll be a good read, assuming I ever get to read it. So many books, so little time. Then I picked up uh, History of Ameri History of Western American Art by Royal Hasrick. This book I have, but it was $3. It was uh, in really nice condition. It's a nice art in there. Yeah, Charlie Russell right there. Then, uh, this I don't have. So that was nice to find something I don't have. Uh, $3 American Canvas. The Art, Eye, and Spirit of Pioneer Artists by Ron Tyler. And when I went into the store, they had another copy in the store for $10. This was three. The $10 copy had a ripped up dust jacket. It was not in good shape. Uh, the book also was not so great. And this is like excellent. Whoever was clearing out the section did me a favor. And this book I also have, but, but. It's rare to find, and it was three dollars, and it was in like excellent shape. Carl Weimar, Chronicle of the Missouri River Frontier by Rick Stewart, Joseph Kettner, and Angela Miller, and it's a really nice book. And for three dollars, I just had to get it. And then this book, I hate to say it, I have it already, but it was three dollars. It was in great shape. And the artist is superb. The art of how it's happening. So when I saw this, I just, you know, usually if you see this in a used bookstore, it could be 10 12 15 25 dollars for three dollars in this condition. I just, I had to get it. Maybe one day I'll have you know, a little bookstore and I could sell my some of my duplicates. I say that, but I don't know if I could ever part with any of my books. 
I could have like a hundred of the same title and I still might just need to hold on. I don't know, you know, times change, people change. But, you know, I have them if I ever do want to have a little store, I have them. This book, the next book I'm going to show you, I don't remember. I don't think this was in my last video. I found this. Was it yesterday? Thursday? I don't remember if it was Wednesday or Thursday. If this is a repeat, I'm sorry, but... Um, Peter Connolly, Greece and Rome. And this is a pretty cool book. Let's see here. There's some nice art. Lots of nice information. If I ever have the time to read it. But, uh... Here. There's some nice color illustrations in here. So again, uh, Peter Connolly, Greece and Rome at War. Cool book. And this was, it was two dollars. Great, great buy. So again, tomorrow I will do one last clip for the month. Tomorrow is a Saturday, the thirtieth, last day of September. And well, I'm not going to any bookstores tomorrow, but I'll just do a quick. Uh, cover quickly what books I read and what movies I watched. Till then, bye. It's Saturday evening, September 30th, and this will be the final installment for my September Countdown to Retirement video. Starting tomorrow, I'm down to 21 months to retirement in June 2019. So today, I, I was home and uh, just did some reading watched a movie, which I'll talk about in a second. And in the mail, totally unexpected from a friend of mine. Um, I have no idea why this was sent. I, I sent an email asking, you know, saying thank you. But it sent me a book, um, Deadville by Robert F. Jones. I mean, I, I don't know why, but cool. Okay. So I emailed asking why. I find out what and maybe he read it and thought it was really good or just saw it in a used bookstore and thought he'd send it to me. I don't know. But uh, I didn't even go out today and the book came to me that I didn't even know was coming. So, pretty cool. Okay. Um, first of all, I realized... My, my voice went up there. I realized that um, in my last video for August that at the end of the month I forgot to say what books I read. <clears throat> that was a vacation month and uh, I usually do less reading. I, I read a lot of articles, try to catch up on some of that stuff. Ne never actually catch up. I'm years behind in articles, not even counting books. Um, I'm hopelessly behind. But I, I'll try to read articles at that time during August. And also, because when I went on a trip, I rather than being involved in a book, I like to have some articles to read. And usually like at the end of the year, in December, finish a book maybe halfway through December and then just try to read articles the next couple of weeks. Um, so for August I, I did read a couple of books. Um, Buffalo Chief which is really for young adults uh, by Jane and Paul Annixter and I out of five stars using like the Amazon rating system I'd rate that a two. I didn't think it was very good. Um, not because I'm judging it as an adult. I just historically it was just not a good book. Um, then I read, uh, this was a PDF that I found on the internet about an author that I really like, A.B. Guthrie Jr., and it was called Hard Work and Tough Dreaming, a biography of A.B. Guthrie Jr., and that was from 1969 by Charles Hood, so I had downloaded that, printed it out, and it, it was, I'd give that a, a four out of five, but it was mostly just like long extended quotes from book reviews and comments other people make it, it, it was and even uh, statements made by Guthrie himself it wasn't really like a very in-depth um, read it mostly mostly again excerpts um, but I, I enjoy Guthrie and learning about him so four stars and then I read some articles, which uh, I'm not going to mention, just various articles. Military History Quarterly, for instance. Okay, then September, currently, 
I read The Captive Witch by Dale Van Every, and I'd give that a 3.75 out of 5. That, that's um, you know, historical fiction. Again, The Captive Witch, Dale Van Every. Then I read a book called The Last Warrior by Frederick Bean, and that book has a, a nice cover, but the inside I just didn't really care for that much. Um, I give that two stars. It would have been better if the author was a little bit more historically accurate. Um, completely, I mean, the Battle of Palo Duro Canyon took place in 1874, and if I remember, if I remember right, he, in the book he's he's got to take place in 1890. It just didn't make any sense. I, why did he do that? It and that was just stupid. I don't know. Just messed up what could have been a good book with bad dating. Currently, um, in this, this month, the two books I'm reading I'm not done with, but I'll finish in October. One is Drums Along the Mohawk by Walter D. Edmonds, and that book's pretty good. I'd rate, so far, I'm like maybe uh, more than halfway through, maybe three-fifths of the way through, and I'd rate that book uh, four and a half out of five. It's nothing that I expected. I Not that I knew what to expect. I, just, I never really saw the movie, and uh, but the book is something... I thought it would be more warfare and male oriented, but it's not. It's uh, I mean, there is some of that in there, but it's a lot. There's women's point of views also, and there's you know women characters and and a lot of like non warfare related things going on. But um, I think it's a good book. I like it. It's a four and a half. And then I'm reading another book called Cavalry: The History of a Fighting Elite by Vuksik and Grabasic. I think I'm saying their names right. I'm not really sure. It's European writers. And um, beautiful, uh, illust it's illustrated beautifully. There's an introduction that's kind of wandering and rambling and it's like 30 pages and it was a bit hard to get through because it just didn't, um, it wasn't very cohesive. It, it was just all over the place. I couldn't really tell what the purpose of it was. It, it needed to be more focused. Um, but so uh, that part, I, I wouldn't rate that high. The next part of the book, there's a hundred il color illustrations of cavalry throughout, throughout the his um, historical times that we know of. And uh, one side of the page is the, pi is the picture, the illustration. The other side is you know, a few paragraphs about the, the cavalry that's being represented. When I say cavalry, it's really just usually the pictures the illustrations of like one person, sometimes on a horse, sometimes not even not, not even on a horse, which I find kind of weird, um, being that it's about cavalry. But uh, the illustrations are great, and it's fun to read. I don't know how accurate it is, but I would give that four stars, um, mostly because of the art. But again, the, at least the the paragraphs accompanying each picture are a bit more focused than the introduction was, which was just rambling. Um, so again, I got this nice book today, Deadville by Robert F. Jones. We'll hope it's a nice book. It takes place in 1833. The cover really doesn't do justice to what I read on the back. It, it, it's like a like an old west town, but it doesn't look like 1833. I'm not really sure what why they used that picture. But on the back, it says that it's uh, 1833 the book takes place in. So... Mountain Men, apparently. I don't know. The cover doesn't make any sense. So that's it for... Oh, that's not it. How can I forget the movies? The movies that I watched. So I'm going to take these in sequence from uh, the 1st of September through now. I watched the movie... And you could look these up yourself if you're interested in them on like Amazon. Uh, I don't really have like details about them. Just my rating. So Together Again... And, and these are all basically, um, for the most part, like old black and white movies. There might be one or two in here that aren't, but basically the that's what's in here. Um, so Together Again, four stars. She Wouldn't Say Yes, four stars. A lot of these are four stars. Behave Yourself, four stars. Too Many Husbands, four stars. Adventure in, in Manhattan, four stars. Behold My Wife, I gave two stars. I just couldn't get into that one. Doctor Who, The Return of Doctor Mysterio. I watched that with my son. I'd give that four stars. Shack Out on 101. It's 
a weird movie with Lee Marvin. Um, I, I'm giving it four stars. Johnny Apollo, four stars. Brief Encounter, four stars. Now here's a weird one. Tarnished Lady from 1931. I don't remember that movie. It says I watched it. I looked it up on Google to see what it was about. I watched a clip on YouTube. I, I cannot remember this movie. I'm, but I watched it. And I watched it on the 18th. Today's the 30th. I, I just, I don't remember. I have to watch it again. It's like, I'm not rating it. I don't, I just, weird. Um, Along Came Love, three stars. The Doctor Takes a Wife, four stars. James Bond, For Your Eyes Only, I gave four stars. Behind Green Lights, four stars. The 39 Steps, that's a pretty good movie, I gave four stars. Free and Easy from 1941, I gave four stars. A weird movie called the Fo called Fall Guy. All one word, Fall Guy. F-A-L-G-U-Y, Fall Guy. And that was kind of a weird movie, but I liked it. it was, I gave it four stars. If Only You Could Cook, that was funny, uh, four stars. That was good. Maybe even like four and a quarter stars. Um, of Human Bondage, I watched today with Leslie Howard and Betty Davis. And I thought that was pretty excellent. I gave four and a half stars to that. That was the highest rated movie um, this month. But if only you could cook, that was really good too. And there were some other good ones in here. You know, the numbers don't mean too much. It's more or less, you know, four could be four and a quarter. It could be three, seven, five. But, but um, so that's it. Those are the movies. Tomorrow, October 1st. And before you know it, it'll be Halloween, Thanksgiving, and then New Year's. And then 18 months to go. Out.